Hello. My name is Tatiana Prophet, and I am not your enemy. I am a musician and a journalist. My goal is to try and help us get along once again. Today I'm here to talk about Brett Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford. But I'm not here to bash anyone. I know, I know. Can it be done? Furthermore, do you even want to keep watching? <sighs> a little about me. Since 9-11, I've been a liberal. For one reason. The Iraq War. And always being for the little guy. Before that, I was raised conservative. As a little girl, I went to Ronald Reagan's inauguration with my mother. In 2016, I'll admit I was slow to see the direction the country was taking, especially those who felt disenfranchised uh, economically. I began to notice fake news too. Um, I didn't know what was more destructive, the, the homegrown frat boys in the suburbs doing copycat CNN articles, or the Macedonia uh, hackers, or even RT, Russia Today, with their snide little hatred of Obama and free trade, which really used to irritate me. So after the election, of course, which was quite a shock, I said, I'm not, I'm out of politics. Not out of bitterness, but I want to try to build a news site that unites, that unites us once again through facts. It's not going to focus on our divisions. It's going to help people to understand one another. So here we go. As a survivor of sexual assault myself, I have an important public service announcement to make. Ladies, gentlemen, and survivors, in this confirmation process for a judge to sit on the Supreme Court, we are not taking on the entire patriarchy and all of their history of the domination of women. Likewise, ladies, gentlemen, and all who have been accused. In this case, we are not fighting on behalf of everyone who has been wrongly accused in a criminal trial, and that includes Salem witches and innocent males, both young and old. So don't get me wrong, the collective rage is real, and it's got an outlet on social media, and I'm glad because that is right and that is good. We need to get that toxic rage out. But there comes a point where it becomes counterproductive and it only adds to the hatred that both sides already have for one another. Here is where I say enough. I want to remind us all that we women are not fighting the entire male population. You're not even fighting the entire white male population. In the years when I thought no one knew what happened to me, I wasn't afraid of all men. I had many good and wonderful men around me whom I trusted, and in that I was lucky. The only men I feared were men, some men with beards, because my molester had a beard. It was in the 70s, and I was three years old. I will now be discussing adult content, just in case you would like to ensure that children are not present. So I've always had a good memory, and one of my earliest memories was being forced to give a hand job to a male babysitter. He was a family friend, and my mom had gone on a trip. Someone came to the door as he was instructing me harshly to move faster. I already knew this was wrong, because I didn't like it. But when he jumped up hastily and buckled his belt, I knew for sure that it was wrong. The scary thing was, 
For the next 10 years, I thought my attacker was a different man. He had a beard too. And every time I saw that man, I felt shame, fear, I felt sick, and I avoided him. I tell you this not to imply that Dr. Ford is mistaken. She was a teenager. It's possible she might be mistaken, but she insists that she's not. The only way she would be mistaken is perhaps if she was going on, on recovered memories from hypnosis. That's a whole other topic, and I just, I'm not implying anything about that. We don't know that. And I'm just including this case of mistaken identity in my story so that we can see how unique each case can be, how complex, and how easily there can be a miscarriage of justice. So I held this secret for 10 years, and it did color my life. Being ordered around in that room, being so small, seeing the male genitalia, all of it directly affected my attitude toward my own body and toward sex for the rest of my life. At age 13, I, I began crying one day and I told my older sister about it. I named the man who I thought had done it. He was still around and associating with our family. The other man was not, and that's why I didn't remember him. The man I thought it was just happened to look, uh, have the same look. My sister told my mother, and my mother came to me. She said that it wasn't the man that I thought, and she knew his full name. I didn't remember him because after he confessed to my mom when she got home, I never saw him again. I didn't think he would remember, she said. I guess there is some wisdom in the shame of being religious or of a religious upbringing because if he hadn't confessed, then the whole thing would have been my word against the wrong man that I was accusing. And uh, it could have gone very, very differently. My mother decided not to prosecute, obviously, or I would have gone through a trial at three years old or maybe a plea bargain with the guy serving a little bit of time in exchange for pleading guilty and then being known as a sexual predator for the rest of his life. Since it seems these behaviors repeat themselves, I can only hope that he was caught the next time. But if we had had a trial and the young man had not confessed, the innocent man would have been put on trial and I would have been sure that it was him. Again, the testimony and memory of a three-year-old is obviously more problematic than that of a teenager. So back to fighting the patriarchy, I think most of society now agrees. All of the ways that women have been isolated, beaten, raped, assaulted, kicked, abused, gaslit, and pushed to the side, kept in poverty, and misunderstood need to stop need to come out in the open. And we need to say that controlling behavior over women or anyone else is simply unacceptable. I know people who believe the same thing. In fact, um, pretty much everyone I know. And that includes Democrats and Republicans. So why in the heck do Republicans, some Republicans, feel it is okay for the president to mock Dr. Ford. It's because of belief. Because apparently humans have a really hard time with ambiguity, gray areas, uh, non-resolution. They must believe something even if it's not right. They must decide. Here are the reasons that liberals stand with Dr. Ford. Because as we know, Often, sexual assault victims do not come forward for many, many years. We women all know someone, if not ourselves, who has never come forward to this day. Republicans ask, be that as it may, how can you believe a woman with no evidence and condemn the person accused of her assault? And here is how they can do that, because until all evidence is gathered, 
and a verdict or decision is rendered, we shouldn't be criticizing anyone. Yes, yes, I know that's hard to do. But it's the truth. Since we are balancing the rights of both accuser and accused, then we should not be shaming either one of them. It's bad enough we're having a trial by media that's full of incomplete and erroneous information and no cross-examination of anybody who's writing their own little column. It's, it's, it's a complete farce, the process. <sighs> Don't you agree? <laughs> well, no, you probably don't. Republicans say this is a political hit job. Could be, but it still doesn't justify attacking the accuser or the accused. How does that help each side? It doesn't. The saddest thing of all to me about this case is that Dr. Ford could have remained anonymous in the press. That is customary and traditional in rape cases. Even if they testify, uh, all publications usually refrain from publishing their names. The Judiciary Committee could have interviewed her months ago, but instead she became a victim all over again, a pawn in a political circus. All that, all that these attacks on Dr. Ford do is make the division worse between us. But this isn't right, you say, if you think she's lying. Either way may not be right. We just don't actually know. Belief is not fact. The thing that we believe could be a falsehood or a fact. So that is why I am unable to determine who I believe in this epic battle of the confirmation process of Ju Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. So why am I saying all this? Because I'm noticing everyone weighing in on social media with extreme anger and they've already made up their minds. Even the ones saying innocent until proven guilty. The fact that this is a job interview, that's relevant. Putting your hand over someone's mouth temporarily with any intent might not have been is serious enough to charge a juvenile, and I'm not an expert, but as liberals point out, that's not the point. If he did it, it shows character flaw for someone being vetted for the Supreme Court. Now, of course, people are weighing in on whether Kavanaugh and Ford lied to Congress now, because uh, an ex-boyfriend of hers said she had coached someone on how to uh, beat a lie detector test, and she had answered one of the senators saying never. We all know, because there are many articles out, that many believe Judge Kavanaugh lied. Um, I've examined some of these statements, um, and I think, I, I truly believe that people are reaching. Uh, just because you don't say, I was a blackout drunk, you know, uh, doesn't mean you're lying. If you say that you drank and you partied, um, I don't know if you can, you know, I feel like it's bad faith to just immediately accuse him of lying. And I'm sorry if this offends anyone uh, because of their belief. But, um, you know, the roommate at Yale came out and wrote a very nuanced and quite... Um, artsy, flowery column about, uh, about how he believes Judge Kavanaugh lied. Um, but I was reading this column and, you know, I always think, okay, okay, okay. Is he stating a fact? No, he's stating a belief because he still doesn't know if Judge Kavanaugh <sighs> exposed himself to Deborah Ramirez. He still doesn't know if he uh, attempted to rape Christine Blasey Ford. What he does say he knows is that he heard Judge Kavanaugh using the terms in his yearbook uh, in a sexual way when Judge Kavanaugh testified in the, um, in the hearing 
that they were more innocent terms. I do not know if a jury or a judge would use that as definitive evidence that he lied uh, because perhaps uh, because the roommate still does not know um, what the intent of Judge Kavanaugh was in college when he was saying these things. Sure, he, it could have been very clear, but it could have been ambiguous. We don't know. Um, this is why I don't share a lot of opinion pieces uh, because the person may have a vendetta that we don't know about. Facts. Facts. <laughs> okay, so today there's been a lot of outrage about President Trump mocking uh, Dr. Ford's answers in the hearing. And I've seen many conservatives laughing and praising him uh, for doing that. I've seen many a liberal friend sickened by, sickened by Trump's words. This is 2018 and the president just mocked a sexual assault victim. He should be burned in a dumpster. So uh, there's a lot of that going around. Um, but those who, who want to burn or destroy the, the pigs questioning Dr. Ford's uh, charge are coming from belief. They're justified. They're justified. Uh, because they believe her already. They believe that she's telling the truth. Now, even if this is a job interview and there is no judge or jury, and we are technically not following innocent until proven guilty, I think we can all see that, that there, there, there are some precedent-setting implications of condemning a man with a charge that has no corroboration. And yet... Each camp digs in with their belief. Neither camp will probably be satisfied with the FBI's findings. Oh, another controversy, another outrage. President Trump also said yesterday that he was afraid for young men. And Anderson Cooper clutched his pearls. I am not making light of it. Many, many people were beside themselves. Um, because I'm friends with both sides, so uh, they were beside themselves. And, but I really want to point out a truism, a precept in, in, in this time of, of such outrage. And that is, when someone says that they support one group, and they're making a, a statement, whoever they are, whether you hate them or not, this doesn't mean that they do not support another group. Now, I've seen Republicans sharing on social media, my son is going to have to wear a body cam and if in any interaction with a girl, and then I've seen other people on social media saying, well, yeah, maybe young women, sh young men should be afraid. Um, so, of course, again, uh, these are really extreme, these are really extreme statements, okay? I do not believe, uh, if, if Judge Kavanaugh is rejected, for the court. I do not believe that it, uh, that young men are going to be afraid for their futures. I think that our society is capable of moving on. And I think if Judge Kavanaugh is confirmed to the Supreme Court, this is not going to mean that all sexual assault victims are, are, are going to be violated. Uh, their rights are going to be violated either going forward because this is a very unique process. Those who argue that it is a job interview need to remember that this is also not a trial, a normal trial for the accused because in a normal trial the accused will be anonymous and it wouldn't have political overtones and it wouldn't be a, a circus, a media circus. So we need to all remember that no matter what happens, it's not going to determine everything else that happens in the future. We're all more awake, Republicans and Democrats alike. We all want justice. And don't call me a Pollyanna because I've thought about this a lot. So if you're on board, I only have a few more minutes. <laughs> so as I've, another piece of insight I just wanna say about all of the sharing that goes on when President Trump says something is, I've seen time and time again that when he says something that sparks outrage, I've observed that this man 
is assuming, okay, it's a theory, I don't know for sure, but it's a pretty good theory. He's assuming you already know that he supports fairness. And this is borne out by some of his statements. He, he assumes you already know that he supports fairness toward all women uh, because he advocates equal treatment for all, as he has said in his speeches numerous times. But liberals want him to state the identity, the cultural identity of the group that he is commenting on every time. Does this sound familiar? There were no Jews mentioned in the proclamation on Holocaust Remembrance Day, a disgraceful display of ignorance and bigotry. That was 2017. 2018, they specifically mentioned Jews. All hell breaks loose, of course, in the first year. But it's, it's again, it's the difference between conservatives and liberals. So this, this outrage because he won't name cultural identity is going to continue because of the fundamental difference I see in the way that conservatives and liberals are wired. Liberals want to talk about someone's cultural, gender, ethnic identity all day long. Conservatives have an almost pathological need to downplay that identity with good reason. They want all to succeed and stop focusing on their identity. But in the process, they can kind of leave behind some important details or history or feelings that need to be expressed. But they would rather, conservatives would rather assert that all are equal and should be treated as such. So this, uh, this tension, this endless debate, um, I really think it's, it's resulting in, in so many needless controversies that are taking time away from the real issues. I mean, these, this go these gotcha moments, so-and-so threatened, you know, threatened white males, so-and-so threatened a conservative black female. No, I get that, that is disturbing, but we need to move beyond this stuff. It's awful, this, it's awful. The majority of Americans are basically good and they have evolved culturally. I mean, how could we not? We've all been watching the same TV shows for decades. It's not like we're sitting there with the Pony Express and we don't know how other races behave. Now, liberals do say, uh, well, conservatives need to admit white male privilege. And I say, well, you know, there are advantages many, many times to being white and male. Not always. Go to Appalachia, Appalachia. okay? Um, we do need to have a lot more conversations. So let's encourage that and not immediately condemn conservatives as racist because they downplay identity politics and want to focus on prosperity and jobs and everyone just being happier and getting better and having a sense of pride in their work and not being on uh, public assistance because they actually have one good job, not two crappy jobs. Some people say it's a pipe dream, but uh, we see some of it happening. What I've observed in my many jobs is that American people, the American people agree on more than we disagree on. I've tested this theory often, and I see very little evidence to the contrary. But what we're doing right now is so divisive and destructive. This is what we do. We're creating a straw man which is an official term for a logical fallacy. It's a scarecrow, if you will, a caricature of our opponent's arguments. We take their argument to the extreme so that it's basically unrecognizable and then attack that. This is known, so this basically shuts down productive debate. With the Kavanaugh case, I'll give you an example. The straw man argument that conservatives say liberals think is I am a social justice warrior and I want anyone who is who is accused to be condemned we all know most women who accuse men of sexual assault are telling the truth I don't care if it's 99 percent uh there's a reason we have innocence projects it's because evidence and the judicial process matter so I just refuted a straw man argument <laughs> But some people actually say that. <laughs> However, uh, many liberals do not actually say that. That's an extreme. And the straw man argument that liberals say 
conservatives think is women who, who accuse men are terrible human beings. They are Jezebels. And if anything happened, they probably brought it on themselves. And I kid you not, I've seen articles recently about how, oh my God, so-and-so who's conservative said that, you know, the rape victim probably brought it on himself. It's like, uh, that's not the majority of conservatives who think that. It's just not. <laughs> I mean, there are women who have had their own rapes, the rapes that I've heard about in detail, who support Judge Kavanaugh and believe him. Okay, so the latest thing about Trump mocking Ford. Uh, people are gnashing their teeth and weeping for the death of America. All the while, men and women who support Judge Kavanaugh have been doing impressions of Dr. Ford and her lack of memory and corroboration all week. Irreverence. Irreverence toward, toward a, a sexual assault uh, accuser. So, you know, it's, it's not a good look in many, many opinions. Does it make it right if they, uh, if they feel justified because they don't believe her? Well, they feel absolutely right. They believe she's lying. And yet they don't believe all sexual assault victims are lying. Just this one. The political theater is simply too strong to counteract this belief. I hear women who have been victims of sexual assault support Judge Kavanaugh because they believe he deserves a fair process. I hear liberals responding that you can tell he's a terrible human being. And they know he lied in his testimony. They don't think all men are pieces of shit, though. Just this one. Now, the extremes, the extreme liberals do think all men are pieces of shit, which I always find really shocking. I just, I, I absolutely refuse to believe that this is more than a 2% of, of liberals. <laughs> um, why is it so easy to tell who someone is going to believe in this case just by their political party? The conservative brain versus the liberal brain. It's not just about gender. It's about how they view everything, what they believe, their values. I sincerely hope we can get to the bottom of the truth here. I really do. I, it's so rare in our society. We're left with this hollow feeling of injustice, and I, I just want us all to breathe and, and look at the big picture. Look for what unites us. Look at all the, uh, the progress that we made and understand that people have very strong feelings about this case. And if we don't actually find out what happened there, um, we need to remember this isn't the end of, of the story about women in society and the patriarchy. And finally, if you really want to know what I think, <laughs> If I were a betting woman in this case of Judge Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford, I would say if they were at that party, at the house, that summer, with those people, and most everything happened the way she said, although everyone claims they had one beer. Uh, everyone says that. Um, but let's say everything happened that she says. If they were in that room together, whether it was two guys or four, I truly believe that both of them believe what they're saying. And that this is a case of um, probably a bit of faulty memory, self-serving memory, as well as not realizing how the situation is affecting the other person. Obviously, she said that he was really drunk. And we really don't know how drunk she was. So um, he insists, though, with a very strong conviction. I, I saw that on the interview. Uh, that he has never sexually assaulted anyone. And I, I find that curious. I'm not saying I believe him. But, you know, people roughhouse. Um, people also, teen, teens also rape other teens. I mean, that was my first thought when this came out. Teens rape other teens. And often it happens on class trips when they have hotel rooms and, and, uh, and no one, you know, really, the teachers aren't monitoring things. And then the, the girl just kind of happens before she realizes 
it or whatever, whatever scenario. And um, it's really unfortunate. But this was a case of, it could have been roughhousing. It could have been, they thought she was having fun. It, you know, I was regularly dunked in the pool by much older boys um, and held under the water. I mean, you could, you could seriously, you could send someone to juvenile hall for that. I'm not saying that it's the same thing. What I'm saying is, in his perception, it could have been, and if it was him, if this was all true, it he could have, it could have been that he put his hand over her mouth and he was laughing and he was drunk. Um, and it was not funny to her, but he didn't, he didn't know that he didn't realize. So, you know, it should really make us all pause that we need to do better. And most importantly, we need to teach our sons how to have a healthy sex life without taking advantage of, of women. And we need to teach our daughters the same thing. So thanks for listening. This is my debut video for Back to Facts. And I look forward to discussing more topics with you in the future very soon. Have a great day. And please, don't overreact. Remember, we're still all Americans. Bye.